Materials World Modules uses material science to supplement science and technology teaching in the classroom. MWM unites the abstract quantitative methods of scientific inquiry with the concrete methods of technological design. MWM was created by Northwestern University material scientists, education researchers, and high school science teachers. Each module has been field tested in science courses nationwide, including chemistry, physics, biology, earth science, physical science, technology, and engineering. Evaluation currently underway points to significant gains in knowledge by students from diverse backgrounds. Materials World modules give students real-world experiences with cutting-edge science, link scientific inquiry with technological design, build social skills through group work, aligns with science content standards and surpasses process standards, enriches teaching. Material science is at the intersection of all of the sciences. You don't put away your biology, you don't put away your physics, you don't put away your math, you don't put away your chemistry, you don't put away your earth science, you take all of it. However you can get it to apply, you apply it. It's teaching a relevant area in materials science where your science intersects with what's going on in the cutting edge world. These topics, these aren't from 1950s, these aren't even from 1980s, these are from 2000 and up and they continue to be updated. So this will get your students hooked and they will see an application for your science to this very relevant area. And I think it's the, the connection to the real world the kids live in. By, by coming at it from the direction of uh, material science, um, you, you're talking about what everything's made out of. The, everything, the whole infrastructure, whatever is around us, um, is made out of this material. And uh, so there again, when the kids are working with this stuff, they can relate it back. They can go home and tell their parents, hey, I know, I know how concrete is made. I know this. I know that. And it's really about everyday stuff that's all around them. MWM is different than a traditional science class in many ways. And it really depends on the teacher how far away from traditional science the, the teacher wants to take the module. That's one reason that I like it, because it's so flexible. You can really do whatever you like with it and go anywhere with it. It allows the student to have control of their own learning and opens up the opportunity for trial and error and testing and, and what we call inquiry and really doing work that is inquiry-based in the true sense. Scientific inquiry generally starts with a problem or an observation or a product or something that you want to gather more information about. Those can be turned into hypotheses. A hypothesis is a prediction and that's where our experimentation comes in. So then you've got you've got to lay out your experiment so that it does test this prediction. Then you you carry out that procedure, you do that experiment, you gather that data, you put it in a chart or a graph or both or several. That data is the data that came out of your experiment. That's what you got. Those are the same kinds of things that we want the students to do in the MWM modules. We want them to make their predictions, to generate hypotheses, to gather data, to evaluate their data, and to present to the class to put it out there for discussion. Inquiry and design go together and it's not a matter of you can either do inquiry or do design. To MWM the idea is really that you can't do inquiry unless you allow the student to come to some place where they can do a complete whole or holistic product at the end or come to some kind of a design question. If anything, we could like leave it in there in a way and just take, cut out that middle part and it'll just have that grain in. That'll keep it from collapsing too. It'll act as like a reinforcement. The design is the best part. The design is where you see students have, you know, every team of students is going to have competing hypotheses. They're going to have 
you know, within a group of two or three, they're going to be two or three to six different hypotheses. They choose one. The one they choose might be different from every other one that all the other groups choose. What they arrive at in their design is going to be completely different than what everybody else arrives at in their design. This is where the, the students get to have total command of their learning process and they will learn and they will remember. I learned that the students, when, when, when they designed something and it failed, they were very disappointed. And I tried to get across to them the idea that um, because it failed does not mean you wasted your time. Because it failed, you learn what doesn't work, and that's, that's learning. You, you, you are further ahead than what you were when you started out because now you know this is not the way to go. There's some other way you've got to go. There's a kind of a model here, I see, of the, of the real world, what engineers do, what people do at the, in, in jobs, and I think it's pretty rare when anybody is in industry and you are all by yourself. You always work with a group of people. And uh, so you need to start training these uh, students at an early age to work together cooperatively, and they... And they really need practice because they tend to be all individuals at this level. I try to stress to the students that in the real world, you have to work with people. You can't. There are very few jobs where you sit in the little cubicle all by yourself all day, every day, and don't interact with anybody, and you just turn in your stuff. And like, kind of like what school is, um, that in the real world, you collaborate and you, work, you have to work with other people. And I try to give them some leeway in how they set up their groups. There are some groups where... They naturally fall into roles. One person will kind of be the director, and one person will tend to record things. Um, so you have groups like that. But you also have other, other groups where uh, everybody's trying to do everything at once. It's just kind of interesting to see how they sort it out. In MWM and group work, everybody's skills are necessary and to draw upon. And so everyone has skills. And it may be in a traditional class, you only need the student who's good at doing this or this. But in a real setting or in an, an open-ended inquiry in a design project, you have uh, many, many demands on many types of skills. So everyone in the group is valuable and a valued member of the team. And that value is reflected in how they feel about what they've been doing and how the others feel about their peer students. Look at the bottom where it starts. So yours is at like five and a half. Okay. I think one of the keys to implementing MWM into a regular science curriculum would be uh, good planning. You know, sitting down and looking at what modules would fit best with what curriculum. Um, although there are many ways to tie them in, you can stress what you want to stress and, and kind of de-emphasize the other things that aren't important. The modules fit very well into science standards, and you can take your state standards in uh, not only the science standards, but the technology standards. And so um, it's very easy to match them up with the science standards. I look at the content objectives that the state is asking, asking us to teach, and then we look at the modules. Obviously, you don't cover every content standard in any one given module, but you cover a certain number of them. Now, you can, you can study these same concepts in many, many different ways, but the Material Worlds modules give you a good way to slot into the content. There are also many science standards that are process standards, and these certainly fill those process standards very well, like interpreting data, analyzing data, drawing conclusions from data, making predictions before you even begin to collect your data. They work on, on teamwork, team building, trying to work as a group and trying to divide roles and to, uh, uh, as you collect data, to help each other with that data collection. Just even lab safety and keeping a clean lab and, and uh, uh, watching out for other people in the lab. So there's a lot of things you can do. And there's always thinking of things to add to the curriculum, never things to take away. But um, all the national standards point to the fact that we should be teaching more depth and less breadth. So that may mean that you're going to have to decide, what do I take out for my particular class? And which do I put in? What do I put in? How much do I put in? That the modules are so adaptable does help there because, again, you know your specific situation. You can adapt a module or you can choose a different module. You know, you, you pick what's going to do you the most good in your classroom. What will help your students the most? You make that choice. 
It depends on what the teacher's looking for and what the teacher wants the student to learn. If it is the science concepts, then you can put them right into a typical assessment, traditional assessment. But if it is something other than that, some original thinking or some reflection on what they've learned and going back and redesigning, then the rubric or the final product and how the student has gotten to that point, we devise rubrics pretty much for each design project because they're all different and they're looking for different specific things in each one. So I would say you can do it in a traditional way, you can do it by looking at the design logs that they're keeping, and writing, and also by rubrics along the way. Learn about material science as much as possible. Make as many connections to the other sciences as much as possible. Practice the, the work yourself several times. Going through the modules is the most important thing to do, and not even just once, many times or several times, and with other people. So it's nice to have a team working on it together. And if you can get a team of three people together or more and go through the module, talk about different things, come up with different ideas together and do some brainstorming with a group of people, that's probably the most efficient way, effective way to learn it. Should I ignore it and get another stick? Sure. So you just did a test. Yeah. Just write it down. <laughs> Even if you just jot down a note, we did this, it's still bending. We did this, still bending. And eventually you want to try to have like three or four things like um like you could vary what you're putting in here. We tried this, we tried this, 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 three things, or four things, or five things. And then you could report to the class. And they're going to learn from what you did, and the other, you, you're going to learn from what they did. You know, it works both ways. I wouldn't take this apart. I would work with what you got here. So let's extend it back over the crimp. It's a lot of fun when you watch them go through the different modules to see as they're sitting in their little groups working they just start naturally using some of the vocabulary that you're introducing because they're getting it's not just a vocabulary with a definition that is just kind of out there that you memorize you have a, a real solid working visual definition of what some of these terms are and it really almost it's almost intuitive to them they don't really and it's funny because the students don't even realize they're doing it and they're like oh this is really easy but they're sitting there talking about using all these terms that they would have said, huh, if you had said them to them before. I was quite surprised because uh, there, there are some days when you think, like, these kids are not really that much into this, and um, they just don't seem to be that excited about it. But you know what? When they were doing their presentations, I looked over their shoulders, and they were writing back, they were writing in their, in their presentations, making slides, talking about all three modules we did. Well, they're going back two weeks ago talking about composites, and they're writing what they learned about composites. They don't have any notes around. They're just writing, you know, what they know about composites, and it was like our teaching objectives. They're, boom, they're right there in a row. I'm like, whoa, this is pretty neat, you know? So they, they really somehow, uh, yeah, they, they retain it because they're using it. They, they, they're using their knowledge, not just trying to memorize it. There's a big difference. Once they know that it's all right to try things and there's no wrong answer and once they know that we're looking for them to get their hands on this material and we want that and we want them to come back and tell us what they're doing and be very open and have a dialogue with us and with each other, work together with each other. Once they understand that, they flower. They really do, and it's a great thing to see. It bounces in, and then this goes down. <laughs> it stops, it pops it out. Can I fit it in? Okay.